Hi Eastgate Builders, thanks for tuning in. In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about the differences between the old drivetrain on the Raptor 1 and the new drivetrain on the Raptor 2. Ever since I released information about the Raptor 2, the forums have been buzzing, people have been talking about hub motors versus belt drive systems. And in this video, I'm going to cut through the nonsense and get down to the nitty gritty of why we made the decision and why the future of electric skateboards has got everything to do with hub motors and nothing to do with a belt drive train. The simple answer is a belt is a bottleneck. No matter how much we develop the outrunner motor, we can make the most powerful, efficient outrunner motor on the market. It does not matter because the belt is the bottleneck. If you can't transfer the torque that you generate in the motor to the wheel, it doesn't matter what you do here. There is no point in our business or any business for that matter, investing into the technology here when it's connected to the wheel via a belt. Let's boil that down and explain exactly why a belt drivetrain can't compare with a hub motor system. So there are three ways we could improve this drivetrain if we so desired. We could increase the width of the belt, which is probably the most logical one and probably cheap as well to do that. Uh, we could make the, the drive pulley bigger. That's pretty easy to do, but there's some reasons you, you can't make it too big. Um, and I mean, the, the third thing is the belt. Uh, you might not know it, but the bigger the belt, the less torque it can transfer. So the total circumference. As the belt gets smaller, it actually can transfer more torque. So the three things that we can do, wider belt, smaller belt, and a bigger drive pulley. The, the larger drive pulley has more teeth, therefore it engages with the belt better and can transfer more torque into the belt. So why didn't we just go ahead and upgrade those components and be done with it? Well, here's a few details about those issues. To make the belt wider, you've got two choices. You can either make your truck hanger wider, you can make your motors smaller. And we don't wanna make our motors smaller because we want to make the system more powerful, right? So that option is gone. So we let's make the hanger wider. Um, you probably need to come, I mean, it's about six millimeters here and here. Um, and then you can put the 15 millimeter drive belt in there. Say if we upgrade the drive pulley as well, get a few more teeth in there, um, that will help, but it also reduces the reduction ratio, which the reduction ratio is actually what creates the torque in this system. So creating a bigger pulley there is sort of counterproductive. You, you make that bigger to transfer more torque, but then it reduces your mechanical torque. So there's a, a few sort of constraints here that you just can't get around. Now, the belt, that's a no-brainer. Let's just make it wider. Now, even if we do that, a 15 millimeter wide belt still is the bottleneck. It still doesn't let you get all the torque out of the motors into the wheels when, say, you compare it to a direct drive. There is no transmission loss here. You can get all of the torque from the wheel to the ground. It's literally, it is the wheel. So of course there's no loss. It's directly driving the torque into the ground. This still has to go through a belt. And when you do the sums and when you really get deep into it and look at the, the performance simulations we have on our hub motor design compared to what our belt drive can deliver you generally see about double the torque at the wheel with a direct drive system when compared to a belt drive system. Say, for instance, you're cruising along around, around half the speed that you can go, just cruising. You come to a hill and 
of course, you start slowing down a bit. You want to maintain your speed and accelerate up that hill even. So with a belt drive system, you jam the throttle down and you want all the power to get to the wheels. Well, the belt can only transmit about 3.3 newton meters of torque into the wheel at 1,000 RPM. Over here at 1,000 RPM, you can get nearly double the torque to the ground. So you can start to see there's a huge difference when you're trying to push the performance envelope. There's always gonna be a bottleneck here, none here whatsoever. The other thing to think about which helps us make this decision is if you do increase the width of your belt so you can transfer more torque, you actually create more rolling resistance. So when you're just cruising along the flats, with a system with really wide, thick belts, it actually, you can feel it. it I mean, there's more resistance there. So unlike with the hub motor, it's, it's basically a wheel. So after running the analysis and doing the simulations, we realized fairly quickly that the only way to get the maximum performance in your electric skateboard drivetrain was to discontinue the belt system. It's just too restricted. You cannot get any more power than what these belts can transmit. When you go to a hub motor, you get several bonus advantages which just can't be ignored. For instance, the two motors here, which are inside this wheel, if you didn't notice, they're actually larger than these two motors here. In fact, they're the same size as our big motor that we would normally use on a mono drive Raptor. And you get two of them. So number one advantage of a direct drive, really big motors. And you can see here, you're never going to put bigger motors in there because they just don't fit. And the other obvious one, which I mentioned a few times already, more torque at the wheels. And when it comes to performance, torque at the wheels is what matters. Now, another perhaps less obvious feature of a direct drive system is there's no maintenance. There are no parts really that, that wear out, like the belt here, which eventually wears out. It, it's sealed. There are no... Uh, holes for dust, dirt, small rocks to get into, uh, water, it's sealed from water. Um, so unlike this system, there are lots of open ports in the motor. Uh, there are areas where sticks and rocks and things like that can get into here. And generally, I mean, you can do a bit of maintenance and, and fix that up. But, you know, after a while, if you ignore this system, and there's debris entering all over it, it can be fairly detrimental. Where here, it doesn't tend to be an issue. It can't get in, so you don't have to worry about it. To replace one of these, if ever, ever a fault occurred, I mean, it's so easy. You can take one nut off here and put a brand new motor straight on, simple as that. All you have to do is disconnect and reconnect the, the wires, and that's it. With a system like this, there's belt alignment, there's positioning of the motor, otherwise it can reduce the service life of the belt and cause problems with vibrations and things like that. So replacing motors and replacing parts here is a little bit more complicated. Here it's one nut. And of course, one of my favorite things about the direct drive is it's super stealth. I mean, some people might not even realize, I mean, Obviously, I've got wires in my hand, but otherwise, um, you might not even know that they're motors. And in fact, the new version, this is, that one's the old production version. Um, the, the new design for the hub motor we've just finalized, um, it's, it's mostly the aesthetics that we were really looking to perfect. Um, and we've designed it around the front wheel. It has the same aesthetic. It's obviously the same diameter, so it's even more stealth. So if all these advantages are so obvious and so apparent, why isn't anyone else doing it? Well, okay, to be fair, there are a few people with direct drive systems either soon to be released or uh, promised to be released, or I mean, we're not the first, but I don't think we'll be the last. I think it's pretty clear 
that there are huge advantages with direct drive and it's you know it's the future um, everyone will jump on board eventually when they realize it but why aren't they yet why haven't people done the direct drive yet well to be honest this system here the belt drive and pulley system it's just easier i mean from a engineering perspective you don't really need to do much with the motors you can take fairly standard motors from the hobby store and with a belt drive system you can multiply the torque that they they give and get a pretty good result obviously you can't exceed the torque rating of the belt but you can certainly amplify the torque of a fairly average motor and get a really good result for an electric skateboard that's why in the do-it-yourself skateboard scene belt drives are super popular they're easy they're cheap uh they're i mean the the engineering the theory behind it is very well known now people know how to to make this work really well the hub motor the direct drive systems to be honest it's pretty complex i mean not a lot of people had much experience in making motors like this it's really a very very new industry um, these motors here that you see these were originally developed by uh, like airplane rc airplane industries drone industries so the technology here has been well developed this this is up to the skateboard community the skateboard industry to really perfect it and we certainly have achieved an amazing result with our simulations um, the, the new version of this is fantastic to look at super stealth and the, the power that you get at the wheel is in most cases at most rpms double what you get at the wheel here hear that double the torque at the wheel when compared to a belt drive system. So what does the future hold for electric skateboards? Well, it's pretty bright. And with a skateboard with a direct drive system, all the bottlenecks have been removed out of the drivetrain. The next bottleneck is actually your, your battery, your, your ability to deliver current. Um, and as, the, as technology progresses with the Tesla Gigafactory and the different um, form factors of cells and the different lithium technologies that are coming into the battery industry will be set up and able to accept any of the new battery systems. We've got the VESC X in the new Raptor 2, which is rated for much higher current. So we've removed all the bottlenecks out of the drivetrain, out of the power system, making the Raptor 2 the most powerful direct drive electric skateboard on the market. So make sure you check it out on the raptor2.inertionboards.com website. And if you've got any questions, just drop us a, a question down below. I'll be sure to get to all of the questions I can. Otherwise you can go into the eSkate forum and join in the conversation there. I mean, we're always talking about electric skateboards. And if you wanna earn some cash, be sure to join up to the referral program. You can earn $100 for every single Raptor 2 that you refer, um, and there's no limit. You can earn thousands of dollars if people use your referral to buy their Raptor 2. So thank you for watching. Direct drive systems are the future, and believe it or not, you can try one May 2017. See ya.